I can see Francesca. I can see Marco. I can see Yeah, we have all the presenters. <laughs> so um, let's go to a new site. So we need a, do we have a minute ticker? So I hope you see the note well. Do you see the not well? Yes. Okay, good. So it's on the recording. So you guys hear me? Test. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Is this yeah, better? We can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Let's go, Logan. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Daniel? Yeah. I have the impression that you not hearing us. are not hearing us. Test? Yeah. Test, is this better? I can hear, you can hear me? Can you, yeah, we I can hear you. hear you. Let me try something. Can someone speak? I, yeah. Now I can hear you. Now okay, can good. Hear you. So we're ready to start. Okay, let's let's go. Please go so ahead. Do you want me to share? Okay, do oh. you want me to share my screen or? As you wish. Okay. So thank you all for making that time. Can you see my um, uh, notes that ITF? Okay, good. You can all see it. Right. Okay, is this better now? So thank you all for uh, taking the time to make it here. So um, as usual, the agenda. Uh, Take note of a note well. Uh, we will need one minute taker. So um, who's going to volunteer? I can uh, help take minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, record, right? Yes, that's me, Rikal. Yes. God, thank you very much. Um, so for the agenda, we have uh, working group loss poll. Key group com, CMP V2, and uh, co op EAP. And then we have the ongoing work, PubSec, profile, GM admin, group com, OS core. And then we have a working group status. Um, so uh, for the working group law school, um, 
for key group com, uh, do you have anything? Yeah, this is Marco. Uh, I have updates based on the uh, reviews that, that came in the last weeks. Uh, there should be slides also. Okay. Share slide. Yes. Okay. You can go ahead. Yes. So yeah, we concluded the working group last call officially at least uh, yesterday, I guess, and two reviews came from Yoran and Sigdam. Uh, thank you both a uh, lot for that. And yeah, you see here the links to the original reviews and uh, my first replies. Uh, right? Uh, yeah, I, I spent some time and categorized all the comments into three different categories. Uh, I took care this morning of all the editorial needs, I guess. Uh, so now it's about taking care of uh, clarifications and some uh, design changes. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, just to um, highlight some of those, that there were a lot of comments from both um, Sigdem and Joran on mm, several clarifications about uh, group rekeying even before coming to uh, possible changes. Um, in the actual design. Um, we need a concrete example of what is intended as administrative key material, uh, the KDC to be fully and all in charge of possibly uh, starting a king and for what reasons. Um, and uh, SIGDEM basically proposed to have a, a dedicated session when, when all these points are discussed and the legal information we have already is just scattered here and there in the document. It's good to collect it, and that help that helps also addressing other related uh, comments later on. Um, Sig then wanted also a, a clarification of the different things that can happen a, as a, an actual consequence of a particular request uh, sent to the KDC. Well, in short, you have these three alternatives. I, I'll explain better uh, in the draft. And she also noticed that there's a lot of repetition of. Uh, error and consistency checks uh, of incoming requests at the KDC. So she suggested to, to try to collect uh, all these common uh, checks and, and put them all together in a kind of boilerplate somehow when, when the handlers are introduced. Uh, next, please. Uh, yeah, th this was the, the first big uh, uh, suggestion from both Joran and Sigdem. Again, uh, it was noted that uh, it's pretty hard to read uh, 20 plus pages of handler description and only after that uh, example of those. So basically we converged to, uh, to this solution where uh, the table of content is going to be restructured a bit to have a sequence of um, handler example, handler example, and so on, filling in with some example that is missing right now. And I got feedback from Joran today, actually, that this looks good to him, uh, at least. So uh, I'll give it a try. Um, it should work fine. Uh, next, please. Uh, yeah, and, and Joran had also more comments about um, what is absolutely necessary of, of everything that this interface is offering uh, in terms of uh, operations and, and parameters and what can be instead, uh, well, be, be optional and, and be uh, not really supported by a minimalistic uh, group member, for instance, as not absolutely necessary. And so for the message parameters, I could see from a mail this morning that, uh, yeah, those categories are, are basically um, okay. And for the set of operations, uh, that looks uh, also fine. Um, but just to clarify from, from the discussion this morning on the list, uh, would this be about adding a, a requirement for profiles uh, to define in detail what has to be supported or not. That's for everyone, but especially for, for Joran. So, sorry, Marco, I, I tried to find my mute button here and I also was in the middle of some <laughs> other thoughts. So uh, is, is, could you please repeat the question? 
Uh, sure, it's about the, the second half of the slide. So the, the set of operations to support. So I understood from your reply, uh, well, the, the two rough categories are fine. And you were more wondering uh, where to define the details, basically. It can be in a profile to say, uh, I mean, to, to prescribe what exactly uh, has to be supported, what is optional of all these parameters. But does that mean that here we should define one more requirement for profiles about, say, something about this? Yes, thank you for asking. So first of all, the KDC, yes, as you said here, yeah, that's, I mean, that's generally unconstrained. It's not, that, that, that could support a lot of them. So it's, it's basically the group member yes. that, that, that we, and, and so exactly how to solve this, I think I, that was what I re replied this morning, exactly how to solve this might, uh, it might be solved in different ways, but uh, the important thing is that it's easy to understand how what what the minimal set of operations would be, and how do we how do we yeah exactly how do we put this in, into the specification? Um, I suppose it's good to explain first of all that this is a sufficient set that you can do meaningful operations with this small set of operations. That you can do minimal, meaningful things with this small set of operations. I think that's the first thing that needs to be stated in this, in this document. And it could be by means of an example. Uh, and then the question is where it is, uh, where this, if there should be a classification uh, and, where, and what to support. And I think that uh, it's, it's nothing that we can decide here. Applications need to make that choice. So, and that could be in, the, in an application profile or it could be in a deployment setting that you decide for these are the operations that we will use uh, for this application in particular. So, so I'm, I'm fine with, with what you're saying here. Um, I just don't think we need to specify more than just showing examples of what uh, what is a meaning, meaningful small set of operations. Right, so if the profiles have to say more, it means that here we need a requirement for the profiles to give a final word, right? A requirement for the profile about what? In this case, about saying what must be supported as a parameter and what is optional, uh, operation, sorry and what is optional to support for a group member. We, we have a list of requirements defined yeah. here that, that profiles are supposed to comply with. And yeah, this would be an additional requirement, right? Uh, does it have to be an additional requirement for the- I, 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 I think that was my original question. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, I mean, so these requirements are really good. They are, they are, they are mandatory and optional. Uh, uh, things to think about, and I think this is more. This is like a, a thing to think about more than something that has to absolutely be in a. Um, oh, okay, so the requirement would be that the the profile decides on, but it already does, doesn't it? What what operations to support? So I, I don't. But what is new here? Right now, everything is supported, and it's with your comment in the review that we are starting to think of something that must be supported or is optional inside the same profile. Right. So then, I, then, then I missed that point that it's everything is supported because that I think is not that should not be a requirement. Okay. So you should. You, so so the requirement would rather be to specify which operations to support. Right. Yes. Okay. Sorry. That sorry for being uh, lengthy in my uh, explanation here, but I think that's that's what I mean. Then it's going to be a new requirement for profiles. Okay. Um. Just. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So I I have some, a question. Um. So the current draft is not only a framework, it can't work without a profile, am I correct? You need a profile concretely to have an okay. instance of this. This is a meta specification. Okay, right. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, you basically never take a default or... Um, and so, yeah, so because um, I have the impression that uh, uh, the profile, I mean, um, there is no limit. Uh, we we have when you, we implement a profile. So you have a framework, 
and the profile can basically do whatever you it can overwrite almost any part of the framework well it has to comply pretty much with this you can add more things yeah according to the same overall idea as an extension but but this is really a common starting point for all application profiles yeah but uh, it can also say let's say you have option a b c and uh, suppose your profile say by default you take a which is not the case here but uh, the profile can say yeah uh, the framework said to take A by default, but uh, this profile supports of this profile uh, mandate that you never use A. Sure, in principle, it's fine. <laughs> <to happen>. Yes. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. So, um, so the the reason I, I am mentioning that is um, um, that um, it, it's good to. I mean, uh, I, I don't think. We, we need too much discussion on um, um, what uh, must... I mean, it's good to, to raise the point on what a, a profile should pay attention to, um, having some um, uh, strong recommendations, but uh, we should also keep in mind that uh, basically the profile can overwrite almost everything uh, in the framework. Yes, the requirement would be profiles must say something, yeah. whatever that is. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. following or defining something alternative. Yeah. Yeah. If it's an abstract thing, uh, you yeah. need to. <laughs> it's not going to work without uh, <laughs> this being specified. <laughs> so, if I may add something here, what I think is nice with this document is that it actually has is thinking a lot about what are the things that needs to be determined by the profile in terms of these requirements. So, I think that's really a good set. Um, which helps people to design profiles for yeah yeah, yeah. so so I, and and just to get the flexibility right there so that the uh, the profile decides on what operations to use but the, the needs for that to in order to make that decision you need to have an understanding of what set of operations you actually need need to support at the minimum yeah 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 so um I, I, I support what you're saying, Garen. Um, it's a bit easily, um, um I mean, we, we should make that document helpful when people are writing profiles, and so uh, that's a that that's going to be the main goal of the document. Given that if something else is needed, it's not a problem because the profile can um, can correct that um, anyway. So if we think we are too too much. Uh, um, we are providing too much recommendation. It's not so much a problem. That's a, that was the sense of what I was trying to say. Okay. Okay. Uh, next slide, then, please. Right. Uh, there were more comments, a bit more delicate. Or, or on some uh, actual design uh, changes. So uh, one of these were uh, was under the same bundle of, of clarifications requested by Joran on on error IDs. Uh, so many things can go wrong on the KDC that can return a, a co-op uh, error response back uh, to a group member. And this started uh, with a comment from Karsten, I think, that was saying, well, just the, the generic co-op error may not say that much or enough uh, to the group member to guide it to uh, do nothing in the same way again uh, or to do the, the right thing uh, right away. So we ended up with this uh, not too many, I hope, uh, error IDs defined here. And the idea is that the ones defined here are available um, uh, in, inherited to all profiles, but profiles can also define um, some more. And I, I got the comment around this, if this can be is simplified and clarified. Uh, first of all, the idea is aligned to the error signaling already present in the ACE framework, especially from the authorization server. So uh, a short um, code number and optionally uh, a text string. Uh, I think we can clarify that, um, I mean, even more that the text string is really optional and is not needed in a setup where there is no human intervention expected anyway, uh, considering that the KDC is going to log uh, the event errors um, anyway. Uh, 
uh, but having a short uh, numeric ID for the group member, I, I think it would be helpful to, to quickly understand a bit better what has happened and, and avoid repeating the, the same mistake. Uh, because again, the generic co-op error doesn't say that much uh, otherwise. Does this direction clarify things a bit already? Yeah, I think so. So I, I, I mean, the, there are different ways. We, we get different input from different people on, on error handling. So we had a discussion in IoT Ops about uh, error codes. Uh, that was in a different context. But anyway, there was a recent discussion on that. And, and the feedback, or, or six months ago, rather. Uh, and, and the feedback there was um, to not provide error, too much details of errors that anyway needs human intervention. Um, so, and that's the question, are these, um, these errors that are specified now, can the, can the device or the group member do anything mean, meaningful already right now, or will, we, will it just be logged in the, in, in the group member, in which case it's sufficient that it's already logged in the KDC perhaps? Uh, it, it can, for instance, an error ID says uh, you don't have the proper roles to do what you're trying to do here. So carefully consider what you can really do or uh, your public is really not compliant with how the group works. So don't use this one. So the, the, the Right, but what is the next step in these two cases? Isn't it involving a human anyway? <laughs> or... Maybe. Uh, if a human involvement is required, then you need also to string around to, to tell even more perhaps. Yeah, and those directions go in different, those um, sort of the general directions goes in different direction. Um, so I, I think that this setup here is fine. I, I don't have a big opinion about that. I just wanted to, while on the topic of error, um, mm. bring up this, that there are different uh, design choices uh, that are being preferred in different contexts. and and. For example, just going for the the integer or the co error code could be an, uh, one uh, good alternative. I mean, like an optional text stream. If you are sure of no human intervention, yes. And I think it's the same rationale used by Ace in the first place for uh, error messages. Yeah. And a, a clarification, the media type content format here also, that's not a new one introduced for the sake of this. That's the one. Uh, already used in this document since forever. So mm. that's supported anyway for all the other messages around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so that's that's good. I, I don't have any more comments. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Right. Uh, Sigdem requested a, a lot of clarifications about the routine process thinking simply on the one-to-one -one, uh, most basic uh, approach uh, you can take. Uh, and she hopes to have additional uh, suggestions on how this can work at a high level and how the, the KDC and the group members should behave. And in terms of recommendation, I, I propose basically uh, this uh, in the reply I gave to uh, her review on the mailing list, putting together the, the uh, things that are already around in the draft, but in, in a more organic and, and linear way. So basically, the, uh, the KDC should really make that resource observable, just in case anyone wants to observe. And if a group member wants to observe it, it can go ahead. Otherwise, it really has to give other means to the KDC to be rekeyed, and that's the uh, control you are right that it has to specify a joint time that we uh, already have anyway. Uh, and the KDC really has to support at least this one-to-one push-based minimalistic approach. Uh, but of course, more efficient alternatives are still available and that, that comes soon. And depending on which group member is observing, if any, which group member has provided this uh, control URI to be targeted by request, uh, the KDC can just go for one way, the other one, or a mix uh, of the two. Uh, so it's not about defining anything new, just explain, uh, explain it in, in this way. And I hope that should address uh, Sigdem's comment. And of course, he would go in that intended new section 
uh, when where everything about Rakim uh, be collected. Any objection or comment on this? No. Okay. Yeah. And more comments on Rakim then, uh, yeah, Jorn had a very good suggestion on, on, on considering for um, group Rakim messages regarding the ex regardless the exact approach used to Rakim. Uh, if these Rakim messages are sent when uh, a, new, uh, a new node is joined the group, that's a good opportunity to include as additional data in those messages, uh, also the public key of that new group member to, to spare uh, that traffic to happen anyway later on uh, for the distribution of that public key uh, to other members. Uh, to be uh, precise, uh, that public key should uh, be sent out along with uh, the identifier of that node associated to that key. And to do these things, we have the necessary parameters already defined um, as used in, in other messages. Uh, uh, from the feedback uh, I got this morning, this seems to be uh, fine to uh, to do. And and finally, uh, yes, yeah, since this is opening for uh, rethinking possible alternative approaches to, to group working other than a very basic uh, point to point that I'm happy to do, um, we would need to signal uh, to the group members upon joining the exact uh, Rekin scheme used in the group. Uh, we can trivially do that by defining um, a new parameter uh, in the joint response, uh, telling the, the scheme used in the group. And yeah, if absent, well, uh, they can just assume as default the, the basic point-to-point -point approach um, anyway. And I got feedback that this is also good to do. So just for my understanding, this is in addition to group policy or or uh, in the placement of group policies? Uh, group policies are around anyway, and they are already covering a number of things. And my first thought was to have uh, one more policy value uh, to, to, to say that. Uh, thing is, group policies are in case uh, specified as an array. And probably it's just better to have um, a dedicated parameter, which can be just a registered integer, uh, for the Rakeen scheme to avoid having a, a whole array with all the policies around if they can go for default instead. And it has more visibility as a dedicated parameter too. But it's almost and, aesthetics. And that, and that would, I mean, I don't understand what, how would the member act in the different cases? So the member supports this group key management scheme uh, and then it sends a join request and it gets back a join response where this scheme is not present, then it will fall back to unicast. Is that sort of how you're going to use this? Well, the Perfect. same indication would be given to all the members in the joint response because the group uses one scheme. Hmm. Uh, so if the joining node knows that in advance, well, uh, all the better, but, but to be hmm. safe, it, it learns when joining and it, it's an integer. Uh, yeah, no, that, that, that sounds fine, I think, okay. yes. That, that, that will require a new registry, most likely, and... Yeah, sounds inevitable, I think. Okay, um, next slide. Yeah, which is basically the, the final point and, and more complicated one. Uh, this was raised also by, by Joran in this review. Um, it is something we considered, uh, I think, around working group adoption, so years ago, for this draft, but uh, then we didn't consider it anymore to keep things simple. And it, it's about um, being sure that all the building blocks are around in case we want to use a Rakim scheme uh, that sends Rakim messages one to many, for instance, over multicast. Uh, that's better for performance, it scales better, especially in, in large groups um, with a lot of members. Uh, so first thing we, it would be to, to ensure we have everything we, we need for doing that around. And we don't uh, right now. Uh, we, we have something uh, and something has to be added. Uh, in particular, we need to add uh, a new parameter in the joining response uh, where to put it simple, the KDC can indicate uh, the multicast IP address where it would send uh, wrecking messages according to the use scheme 
to uh, to the group members. Uh, this address can come with a sort of uh, base URI or root path, basically. So that's to indicate where uh, tracking messages would be sent, uh, for instance, in, in multicast. Uh, then we need, of course, the indication of that scheme, and that's the point that we, we discussed uh, right before. And then we need to provide, upon joining, uh, additional uh, key material, which is used only to perform uh, the recing process itself. And funny enough, we, we have that parameter defined already. Uh, it's MGT key material, I think, which was defined exactly for that, uh, but not together with other uh, and necessary building blocks around. So if we basically define the parameter for the multicast IP address and the parameter for the Rekin scheme, uh, I think we have uh, all the mm, building blocks around. Um, then we need additional content in the document anyway. And if I understood correctly the, the uh, latest reply from Joran this morning, uh, it's good to have an, an example uh, not too specific to cover uh, any possible ranking scheme whatsoever, but, but to give you an idea how this can practically work. Um, so other than the new parameters, uh, I think we need some, some more general consideration before coming to that example. Uh, we need to clarify that the ranking messages sent one to many by the KDC uh, have to be also signed by the KDC. Uh, to ensure source authentication, because all uh, of the targeted group members that are targeted for that tricking message can, in principle, manufacture it. So you really need a signature from the KDC here. And speaking of which, uh, that's something that was defined for totally different reasons in one of the profiles. So here it helps for the sake of source authentication of one to many ranking messages. I can transfer here uh, from that document the, the general definition uh, of the provisioning of the KDC public key to the group members when they join. Uh, so some specific detail, uh, really specific for the profile can of course stay there, uh, but general definitions, especially of related parameters can be imported in this document. First of all, also as a checkpoint, does this particular step sound good? So I have a couple of comments here. First of all, this parameter we defined in the previous slide, that, that would be sort of the overall um, index, which determines whether this information comes or not. So, so I suppose, or, or is it, do you intend to sort of cover all possible um, key management schemes? Or could, could it be like, um, depending on the value, integer value of that parameter, the, the key management scheme, you will have, you will define uh, a, a, a specific uh, uh, data structure that's, that goes with the join response. And in this, and in case of, this type of uh, multicast, then you would have this management group URI parameter. So what's what's your take on that? Is it something uh, one size fits all, or is it something that is dependent on the particular scheme? It's very dependent. And if you indicate a, a one-to-many scheme, you will have a multicast address. Otherwise, no. Um, and depending on the exact scheme, you will have a different um, administrative key material for the rekeying specified in the parameter we already have for that, because that, that's very much scheme specific. And if the scheme is one to many, uh, well, I, I'd really expect messages should be signed by the KDC. So you need the KDC public key also provided in the general response. And good thing is that for different reasons, we define that already in the other draft. <laughs> hmm. So it can be moved here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really think that we need to think about large groups here. So yeah. that's, uh, um, this will be a slight complication. And the, the main thing is that we don't complicate for the unic, we shouldn't complicate unnecessarily for the unicast case. So, so if you want to just use the unicast rekeying, 
that should not that should just be setting the uh, the key scheme the uh, or the group uh, keying scheme to some parameter and then you don't need to care about uh, these parts i think that's fine yes but if you do want to use uh, some more efficient scheme then then you need of course to specify additional uh, things and you need to sign sign the uh, response so i think that's that's fine. I don't have any problems with what you propose here. Um, I'd like to read the details. Okay, so I'll, I plan to define the missing parameters uh, to bring in what is generic enough about the KDC public key provisioning. Uh, then in the new to be uh, section on Reking, uh, I'll try to give a very high level uh, guidelines uh, and some details also about this, this one to many advanced scheme. Uh, I'll try to come to the point to elaborate an example uh, that you want your and probably we'll need to go through a kind of back and forth for the right level of detail. And even if you want to say not too much, you need to take also an exact scheme as an example. So I think I'll go for key graph. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there is still an option, as, as I mentioned in my response, that we bring out these to some other document. And I mean, the example could definitely go in another document and the details, um, if you think that's better. I suppose that some of the things that, su that support you need, like signatures of the join response, that can't really go to another, well, it's, it's better to keep in this document. Uh, but there is the option to keep everything in key group comma score, for example. If you think that's a better choice. Um, I think something generic enough, even as an example, can happen here uh, but I expect if you want something really to, to take and implement to the point of message format, then you need yet another document uh, defining a binding between an exact working scheme and a profile of this document. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but let, let's start with this one. <laughs> and I'm actually done. The next slide was just a summary. Uh, I'll work on these points. We can skip this one because it really needs to seek them, and those points are in the reply I sent her. And yeah, I'll work in these comments. I collected some further clarifications related to questions raised at the ITF meeting in July. We work for the cutoff. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So basically, uh, I have a sense that. Um, um, I mean, all comments are on, on a good way to be addressed um, by the next ITF. Um, uh, to be realistic, these latest parts on the efficient group working might require some more iteration after that meeting. I okay. Suspect. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, good. Let's continue. Thank you. So, um, next one is CMP V2 co op transport. So, um, are the offers ready? Yes. So can I, uh, can I start sharing the, the site? Yes. Yeah, can you please share? Thank you. OK, 
please go ahead Oi. hello everyone so uh, i'll just go over the, the yeah so i'll just go over the status of this draft so this has been in working group last call for for some time and uh, i got some uh, creative comments from the group uh, which i have uh, kind of resolved the uh, so, so this uh, we can move to the next slide this is just uh, this gives the context of what this draft is here so so currently uh, i i got few comments in the working group task call which i have resolved over the email and i have made the changes to the current draft uh, the only thing uh, pending uh, currently i'm working on is to uh, so this draft is dependent on these two the lightweight cmp profile and cmp update so i'm just going over these things to make sure if there is anything i need to update in my draft and uh, uh, th that is uh, taking a little bit of time uh, but i will i hope to close it soon and then uh, there was one uh, email on the ace working group about uh, uh, like the ina registration for the for the uh, for the suffix for the dot bell on path uh, so I, I believe this will be resolved over email so uh, most likely we'll use the, the, the IADA registration in the CMP updates draft for this. So, so I, I, I am planning to uh, just, uh, so mostly I'm working on the number, uh, bullet number two, which is to make sure these drafts are in sync with the latest uh, CMP updates and see lightweight CMP profile draft. And hopefully I'll publish the final draft soon. So, I mean, um, it's a, I mean, there is nothing just to make sure I um, I correctly understand. Uh, there is nothing that blocks you from publishing this version now. Um, yeah, I mean, correct. today. OK, good. Um, OK, good. Yeah, so uh, so it has been a little bit uh, lags on on my side also, but I'm trying to uh, co cover for it and uh, hopefully publish the version soon. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I was just wondering if we were waiting for some um, some um some um some some even to happen in lamps um uh, no no uh, so so i was just uh, i i just need to i i kind of lost track of these two drafts for some time and i'm just going over them and making sure uh, there is nothing uh, like what changes i need to make in my draft for for the reference okay. all this um do we have something that is um uh, defined by both drafts or one is relying on the other uh, so, so other than this ia ia yeah. nothing, uh, nothing else okay because then um i mean um we can also check uh, how to proceed uh, i mean the first draft might do the registration so that we don't uh, they are not waiting each other so I think they have already uh, gotten a temporary registration. Oh, okay, right, okay. So, so it's that done. is valid Perfect. for one year, and I think uh, once they publish, it will be permanent. Okay, good. Perfect. So yeah, that that's the update on my side. Uh, I, I don't have anything else to discuss. Uh, okay, if great. Any questions I can answer. Yes. Any questions? Sounds everyone agrees. Thank you. Thank you, Moit. So, uh, if there are no question, I'll proceed. So, the next one is Co op E. Um, Hi. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so if you got past the slide, so uh, there are a few points that uh, we are putting here as a consequence of the review of Christian Amsus and some of the feedback also by, by Karsten. So the first one would be the ne next slide, please. The first one would be the, the one with more substance that uh, Christian presented a, a use case based on the possibility that some devices may not have full support of, of confirmable messages. And uh, that made us think 
that we may need to rethink how we approach the design. The original one was set to use confirmable messages with piggyback responses, which worked fine. We also had the eight OS uh, scheme to keep ordering warranty. But as we started thinking that we may not have uh, all the support uh, from uh, co-op implementations, we started thinking that we may need it to uh, take all the work that Coab does for the exchange with confirmable messages and piggyback responses and take it up to the application to be able to support uh, any possible use case. In fact, so we, before, uh, before we dive deeper into that, who yes? said that? Uh, we, we, uh, there was a, a, an email uh, from, from a review from Christian that uh, commented that uh, some devices uh, may be so constrained that may not be, if I am not mistaken, I may be uh, quoting wrong, but uh, I thought that I think that was the idea that may, maybe that was not the best approach for uh, using confirmable messages for very constrained uh, devices. You probably need to find out what's going on there because uh, saying that a device is not not uh, powerful enough to support confirmable and then saying, well, then we have to implement everything again at the EAP level. That doesn't sound like a winning strategy to me. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Yes, yes, in that sense. But that, that make us, made us think that, uh, that we may also have to support uh, other other use cases, uh, like for instance, we may have uh, a confirmable messages, a confirmable request, then not a piggyback response, but just the acknowledgement, then the retransmission will stop, uh, right? But uh, yes. what what do we have? What what do we do if the response doesn't arrive? Coop stops the retransmission right there, so we may need even in this case, to take retransmissions <coughs> at the application level because of, because of all the possible uh, types of exchanges with COA. So that, that may be the seed, the, 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 that comment about uh, non-confirmable may be the seed, but that uh, made us think about other uh, use cases or types of exchanges that co needs to support, like that one when we receive the uh, acknowledgement, but the response doesn't arrive, then the application is dead. So we, we need to account also for these cases. So this made us think that at some level, we need to take responsibility of retransmissions at application level. Uh, that, does that make sense, Karsten? Well, I wouldn't call it the retransmission, but yes, if, if, if you have a failure, uh, for instance, your, your EAP server might go away. Uh, it, it's certainly a good idea to be able to handle that. Uh, but I, I would not say that you put this into this protocol, but uh, th there should be something around this protocol that, that handles uh, EAP exchanges that, that simply do don't go to conclusion because you, you have to have that anyway. So basically that, that was a little bit the, the seed that made us think about this issue. I think it needs to be defined. And uh, we may have a, an exchange later, but our idea basically was just to be able to manage uh, at application level which messages make it to the authenticator and which ones uh, do not. To be able, as you say, be it at application level or with another mechanism that those around it, to be, to be able to trigger again the message that is needed for the the exchange not to be a uh, deadlock so uh, one of the ways we saw that was to keep track of uh, all the exchanges that are being processed so in in the case uh, any of the messages arrive out of or, uh, out of order or are already processed we uh, are able to to prevent them to go up to the ip state machine uh, 
so basically that's a little bit the, the context uh, to this we may uh, we may add that uh, one of the suggestions also by christian was uh, instead of using two times the uh, well-known uri use it only once in the first for the controller and send in the payload the as you can see in the first message uh, there is a payload uh, slash, uh, uh, slash x expressing the first resource to which the the authenticator needs to go in the next uh, step in fact we, we have a, a meeting with christian next week to try to clarify this uh, we, we may need uh, to to take some some iteration of, over these concerns maybe we, we can also uh, exchange thoughts with you Kirsten, if it's okay with you sure I'm, i happen to be on vacation next week so i can't join that uh meeting but I, I sure would like to understand what what christian was trying to do here because uh, I, it's uh, uh, sorry uh, this is rafa i raised my hand i wanted to make some a uh, few clarifications uh, can i talk yeah yeah sure sure okay uh karsten yeah, i right. think uh christian uh, uh made a good point and actually what in my opinion what he said is uh, somehow is specified in core irc uh, the thing is, for example, uh, it happens that a co-op server may decide not using piggybacking. So what he said is basically you are in your flow. What you are doing is somehow mandating that the response from the cron server must be piggybacked. So yeah, you shouldn't do that. Exactly. That's the, the Christian's point. So to okay. me, it's a fair point. So that's the first thing. The second thing is some, is regarding some implementation notes in the uh, core RFC. Actually, uh, in that, uh, for example, section 5.2.3, for example, they say, if the request message is non-confirmable, the response should be returned in non-confirmable confirmable message. But you should, you, I mean, but an endpoint must be prepared to receive uh, a non-confirmable response and in a reply to a confirmable request or a confirmable response in reply to a non-confirmable request. So the point is, if we force to uh, an implementation, let's say, to the specific flow we, we have in our draft saying, okay, we are going to use confirmable and then it's mandatory to use piggyback, then we may find some problem with the implementation. Okay, so implementation about based on those implementation notes. So the thing is, we can use uh, it's not replicating all the co all the things Coab is doing in terms of retransmission or whatever. But the truth is, uh, for example, if you send a message in a confirmable uh, message and you receive the acknowledgement, and the response is coming from a non confirmable uh, message, and you lose that message, you need to retransmit somehow the previous one. So, our, in our opinion, in our opinion, you know, IP RFC tells you that IP allows retransmission, deduplication at IP level. So, in case you are using that, uh, the IP lower layer. In this case, Coop doesn't need to do that. So that's the way we change our thought. Because basically, right now, assuming a piggybacking, if a state machine doesn't need to do retransmission or anything, actually the retransmission time is set to infinite following the the IP standard. If the IP lower layer is doing the job, but basically we cannot force, according to Christian's comment. We cannot force say, okay, you are going to receive the answer. I mean, the response in a uh, piggyback acknowledgement. So based on yeah. that, so I, I think really it's like if you did this on top of TCP, you, you would be worrying how many acknowledgements are actually being sent, and and if there is a retransmission and so on. That 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 all happens below at the TCP layer, and exactly in the same way. Uh, you should be assuming that you have a, a co-op implementation and you are sending a request using the co-op implementation and uh, you get a response 
or maybe you get stuck, for instance, if the, the co-op server explodes while, while this is being processed, you probably will not get a response. Uh, but th that's really the, the level at which this needs to be discussed. And you shouldn't be second guessing what the co implementation actually sends and receives. You send a request and you get a response. That's all that, that should be in here. And you, using non-confirmable requests for for this kind of interaction is yeah. really weird it's really weird no it's it's a karsten there is a there, basically that's it that is based on something that eb standard says it says the eb at the beginning of the eb standard says the eb uh, is able to do the retransmission and everything and if you do that the eb lower layer that, that uh, shouldn't you shouldn't do that you know it's, you shouldn't replicate that. So somehow what we are saying an application in, in our, uh, uh, under our standpoint, if IP is doing retransmission for its packet, the service we need from Cobb is just sending a message. We are you need... telling me I cannot use EAP over TCP? I, I don't think that is the intention. Exactly. We, I mean, it, it happens actually in that case, TCP would be the e blower layer. What we are, what we are saying is we are using co-op as e blower layer. So we require something from co-op. One thing we could do is just merely say, okay, I want to send this message using a non-confirmable message. And that's okay because if is assumed to work in that kind of a, a type of e blower layer. So, so, so it's not a, to me. It's not a problem of the uh, Bob implementations or its application level. We are using something which is the resource, as you can see here, resources to keep the or, uh, uh, an order. So that is required in uh, for an e blower layer in EB standard. So basically, what we are handling here is just the resources, basically. The co-op server is keeping track of two resources, Y and Z. But that that, that is happening somehow at application level. Uh, based, based on your comments, you remember you proposed that the co-op server should, you know, propose any resource. And there right. is no sequence on that. And to keep that sequence, we need to work with the, uh, with the uh, resources, uh, as uh, Dan mentioned. But if you if, if you don't want to use that kind of resource handling, the assumption there then is Cobb is doing. I mean, you request, or you ask for Cobb to do uh, confirmable meshes and piggyback, and that is mandatory. And that no, was no wait 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 wait. Asking Cobb to do confirmable requests is a reasonable thing to do. Right. You have no control over whether you get a piggybacked response or exactly. a separate response. Exactly. Exactly. But th 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 that's completely irrelevant because you don't see that. At your level, you see a response. Right. Right. But but the the the, the main problem the main problem we see is the retransmission because you know if you send a cop uh, request and then you receive acknowledgement that step the request has been sent but then you need to receive a response what happens if you don't receive a response then the whole thing failed no 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 actually if stain machines can act and reply the IP request so you say can but um, does it has to no no it's 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 it depends it depends mm. how the e blower layer is handling the retransmission of the request and response. <laughs> and we, do, we, we have no control on that, do we? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Since we don't have control of that, then we need to ensure that when we send an if request, we will receive the if response, if response, try to retransmit according to the if state machine, and obviously, if you reach the max number of retransmission, obviously everything is done. I need to go to my next meeting, but I think what we are designing here is, is, is seriously broken. Is what? 
seriously broken. And I, I would love to be in that meeting next week, but I, I can't be. So um, no, it's a it's Corey, a, I yeah. mean to to for us is no is no uh, the assumption the assumption here looking at the the cob is not uh, used in a different way as you mentioned. We send a request, we receive a response. Yes. Right. Right. But what happens if we don't receive a response? Your your criteria is we stop everything. Yes. Right. But what what happened at IP level? <laughs> exactly. Well, what, 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 what happens if, if your server never responds in the first place? That, that's exactly the same thing. Exactly, exactly. What happened if you don't receive a response? Yeah. Then 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 IP state machine gives you mechanism to uh to to react to that uh case. So for us, is there is nothing broken here. <laughs> it's we are using services provided by Co-op. Then we send the IP request. We wait for their response. Their response doesn't come. Okay, so it means. So what, what's your timeout on that? Sorry. What's your timeout on that? Three it's minutes. I, I don't understand your question. Sorry. <laughs> what's your timeout on that? My timer? He, yes. He, what uh, timer or time out? What cost it? Time out. Time out. I, so I, he, I, I, I would need to check the it's uh, time out is uh, I would need to check the IPA specification, but it's uh, calculated uh, by a function according to the IPA state machine. So you receive the, the the time you need to wait before uh, resending the next IP request. Is is that the specified in the IP state machine? RFC. We don't have time. I can show you the the you know the yeah the, the yeah. I the, think uh, we need to, to have a separate meeting. But what what I really don't want to to have is a situation where we have two statements on top of of each other competing with uh, doing retransmissions. I agree. And, <laughs> I agree. I agree. So. <laughs> actually, actually, the, what what the uh, what the uh, the IP specification tells you is that precisely the thing you are saying. So, if you are doing the if you are doing the the retransmission, I mean the the IP lower layer co-op is doing the retransmission, stop the retransmission at IP level. That's clear. That's clear. One thing to avoid that, since IP allows you to actually that was a mohi said the comment since if is allowing you that i mean to do retransmission and some kind of the duplication okay we can uh use cob in a more uh, in a simpler way so we don't need let's say retransmission capabilities at cob level so we can send the request using a non-confirmable message so every every retransmission is happening at the IP level, which is fine. The only you, the only you are essentially is... not using co-op, and th th that's certainly something that I don't uh, consider a particularly good design. So what 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 basically what you want to do is to avoid the usage of co-op here. No, I, I, I'm i trying to tell you that you should co use co-op as it was designed. And yes. it really, for, for this kind of interaction where I need a response from from a server, I have confirmable messages and that's what we should be using here. Okay. Okay. There's no, there, there is no, if we can require, I mean, if that is something prescriptive, uh, uh, as Christian mentioned, we can say that actually in the draft. So. So what we are saying is we want to use confirmable requests. So we stop, as you mentioned, we stop the IP transmission at at IP level. That's fine. But but the thing the thing is this again. If we are not assuming, as you know, retransmission in COB is happening at message uh, messaging layer, right? So it's not happening the request and response. So what you're proposing is basically I send a request. I have I haven't received a response. Then I stop the process. 
Is that, is that correct? Let's uh, do that in a separate meeting. Sorry, I'm, this is really too surprising to me that, that uh, this is the, the outcome of a comment that Christian would make. So I, I'm, I have to understand what Christian is trying to do. Okay, yeah. let's, let's uh, since you are in the holidays, maybe in two weeks or three weeks, we can talk. Yes, uh, also as well in the interest of time. And since Kosten, you're going to drop into another meeting, please, uh, as a reminder, make sure to um, sign in on the blue sheet. And um, um, we need to um, shift to uh, other styles and other topics as well in the, interesting, in the interest of time. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Let's Thank try you. To, to schedule this meeting by email. Okay. Thank you. Do you want that to be as an interim meeting? No, th th that's just a design team meeting. Okay. Okay, right. Okay, yes. Okay, right. So thank you, everyone. Um, we can probably adjourn the meeting. I think we only had an hour, and uh, Kasten is uh, has another meeting. Or do you have time for discussing anything? I have to run now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry okay, about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.